Hello, my name is Kazmira, and I'm currently a student in Siege Colleges. I'm enrolled in the uh, Applied Nutrition Master's Program, and I'm taking Disease Management and Pediatrics this semester. So for this assignment, we were given a medical condition to research and discuss with you guys. The one that I chose was B12 deficiency and pernicious anemia. B12 is a member of the B complex vitamin, so it's an umbrella of vitamins that work as coenzymes in the body, meaning hand in hand with other enzymes to get jobs done. The jobs that they're responsible for are energy production, red blood cell and DNA synthesis, and tissue maintenance and repair throughout the body. So B12 is a vitamin that's difficult to be deficient in. It takes a long time. So the ways you can become deficient are through an extended time or over an extended time of following a diet that's low in B12. You can have an overgrowth of bacteria in your gut. So those bacteria also use the B12 that you're consuming, but they get first dips. They're closer to it. So if they use it all and there's none left, you don't get any. There are surgeries that can influence malabsorption for B12. So your gastric bypass, your intestinal resectioning, there's medical problems that can influence it, um, that cause malabsorption also, like uh, celiac disease and Crohn's disease, those inflammatory kinds of diseases, including atrophic gastritis, which is inflammation in the stomach lining. And finally, there is an autoimmune disease that can cause B12 deficiency, known as pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is a megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Megaloblastic means that it is um, it affects the DNA of the red blood cell and it doesn't work correctly. It's dis it's misshapen. It doesn't form correct. And um, megaloblastic means it's larger than normal. So that anemia is characterized by secondary to lack of intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a protein that's secreted by cells in your stomach that needs to bind to the B12 before you can absorb it. The intrinsic factor transports the B12 across the intestinal, the intestinal wall. Without intrinsic factor, you can't absorb B12. So the symptoms of B12 deficiency affect your central nervous system, they affect your blood, um, your blood, your circulatory system, they affect your gastrointestinal system. The central nervous system symptoms include things like tingling and numbness in your hands and feet, memory loss, uh, psychosis, mood disorders, muscle weakness, dementia, and um, in a pregnant woman, if she's deficient, it can cause neural tube defects in the fetus. For blood, it is the megaloblastic anemia. It is also the uh, hypotension. It can cause low blood, low blood pressure. With gastrointestinal, it can cause diarrhea. It can cause constipation. It can cause incontinence. So um, the populations that are most at risk here are elderly. It's usually most present in elderly over 60 years old because the cells that produce intrinsic factor in your stomach start producing less intrinsic factor. So you can't absorb B12 as well. Then there's also those who have had the gastric surgeries. There's those that have the malabsorption uh, medical conditions and then the, and the overgrowth of bacteria. And then there's vegetarians and vegans. B12 is only present in animal sources in the diet. You cannot get B12 from plant sources whatsoever. So the best sources are things such as liver, let me find my card, liver, which has 48 micrograms per slice of B12. There's beef, which is a close second, it's around 48 micrograms a slice. Uh, there's clams in three ounces, there is approximately 34.2 micrograms of B12. Salmon has about 4.9 in 3 ounces of salmon of micrograms of B12. One cup of plain yogurt has 1.4 micrograms of B12. Tuna, 3 ounces, has 1 microgram of B12. Milk, 1 glass of milk, 8 ounces, has 0 0.9 micrograms of B12. And then cheese, also, in 1 ounce of cheese, there is 0 0.9 ounce, uh, micrograms of B12. One large egg has 0.6 micrograms, 
and half of a chicken breast has approximately 0 0.3 micrograms. So how much do you actually need a day? It varies on your age. A 0 to 6 month old only needs 0 0.4 micrograms a day. So it's not very much. Based on those foods, you don't have to eat much to get that amount of B12 in your diet. 7 to 12 month old is 0 0.5 micrograms. A 1 to 3 year old is 0 0.9 micrograms, which is the equivalent of 8 ounces of milk a day, which all 12 year olds love to drink. Um, or 2 year olds love to drink, sorry. 4 to 8 years old is 1.2 micrograms. And then 9 to 13 years is 1.8 micrograms. And 14 to 18 years is 2.4 micrograms of B12 a day. The best uh, ways to determine if you're B12 deficient, if you feel those symptoms, you can go to the doctors. They will test your blood. They'll draw your blood. And if you are deficient, well, when they draw your blood, they'll look at your blood, and then they'll check your serum levels of uh, B12. And then if it's borderline or low, they'll check your homocysteine or your, um, or your methylmalonic acid. So this is what a normal blood cell would look like under a microscope when they test your blood. This is what a megaloblastic blood cell would look like. Misshapen, misformed, uniform, same color, same shape. Big difference. These ones don't function. These ones work well. So ways to treat B12 deficiency. If you are in early stages, you may only need a supplement. Or if you're a vegetarian and you realize that you're at risk of being deficient or in any of the other categories that are at risk, just make sure you take a supplement every day. Talk to your doctor first, though, so it doesn't interfere with anything. If you don't like taking a supplement, they have um, sublingual sprays so you can just or tablets. They have them in tablets, too. It goes right in your mouth, and you absorb it under your tongue. They have intranasal gels, so it squirts right up your nose, and your ner the blood vessels in your nose absorb it. If you're severely uh, deficient and the symptoms have already surpassed and gone into the central nervous system symptoms, doctors oftentimes don't feel comfortable starting just with a supplement. So they start with intramuscular injections, usually twice a week. When you see improvements, it can go down to once a week and then eventually down to once a month until you've uh, stable and maintained. If it is pernicious anemia and it's autoimmune, that means it's never going to go away. You'll have to do intramuscular injections for the rest of your life. But the good news is there are those treatments, and um, it's no longer a death sentence. Pernicious literally means deadly. So it used to be that if you were diagnosed with pernicious anemia, you didn't have much longer to live. It was going to uh, decline quickly, but now it's not. So that's a good thing. If you feel like you're at risk, you feel like you have symptoms, you want to be checked out, tested, talk to your doctor. If you want to increase your diet and supplement that way, talk to an RD. If you have any other questions or concerns or anything you think I might be able to help you with, Feel free to comment on the video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, guys.